All right, ladies and gentlemen, traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Hope you guys are feeling good. Hope you guys were able to do well. So today, as you guys can tell from the thumbnail, we are up just over 2K on the day, or actually just shy of 2K. We did give back some money trading Tesla here. You know, I was watching Marcelo's uh, recap and I kind of got a little FOMO and uh, took a few Tesla trades that did not go super well. Um, so we ended up finishing just below 2K, but uh, all's, all's wells, ends well, is that the saying, right? Um, it was a decent day. We, we had a couple of low float stocks that did well in NVVE, TGL, and KAVL. NVVE, honestly, um, I, I thought had a lot of potential early. And it's a little disappointing that I didn't finish up about 2K on this stock. Uh, you know, it, it gave an, it gave a very, very, very good move going from about seven up to 876. Now you might say RT, that's not a ton of range, but man, it was clean. This thing was clean. What got me was being overly aggressive in the wrong areas twice, twice. And on top of that, I could have done with some more size, to be honest. I could have done with some more size. You know, a lot of positions came about 1,500 shares and 2K. We could have done a lot more positions with about 3, 4K and really gotten up there very quickly. Right? Uh, KVL, uh, let's see, NVVE. Again, you know, 1,500 share positions, 2K positions. We definitely could have done better. So, you know, for some context, this thing started off around 499 pre market, pushed up nicely. You know, by the time we were coming into the open, we were up here around 750 uh, area, right? So we did see a bit of a pullback initially, $7, and then we pushed up nicely, going up to 774. Coming into the open is always a little tricky because there's multiple stocks moving. So sometimes to capture the opening search is a little difficult. Um, this one ended up going without me as I did watch KAVL. As you guys will see, I did take a few trades KAVL into the open, which ended up being a little sideways for the first minute and then taking off. So as a result, you know, I'm not watching this one. An opportunity is going to cost from 7 to 774. Massive opening surge. Pull back to 37. Beautiful dip. Remember last week we saw a lot of stocks going up aggressively. But what were they doing? Coming all the way down the dip. So, in a wrong place, essentially, but this dip is going to be good. Because I could have done better in the first two minutes on this one than I did KVL. It pulls back nicely to 37 and then gets all the way back to the highs. And then from there, it looks like it had another small pullback. And then over 808. Or let's say over, over, over 787 to high of 808. And then it ranks and repeated. Low of 88, high of 34. Low of 11, high of 39. You can see how clean, I mean, this move was just, it was just so clean. It, this move, it doesn't get any cleaner than this. And so where I ended up giving back profits, I believe, was in this area here, as well as over here at the highs. Or it might even been the high of this candle because I, I, I kind of got in a little tunnel vision thinking this thing might just keep going and rip right through the resistance. But we have re resistance mapped out here for a reason. And you can see we have dual trend lines, one at the pre-market highs and one at 860. So it was pretty known that, hey, around this area, be a little bit more careful because we could see that bigger pullback. And that's exactly what happened. Actually, it was I think it was here. Not I, I, let's, let's erase this one. It was more so here and here where I gave back. I think this particular candlestick, I did a 10 buying the dips. Even if I got stopped out, that would have been fair. Um, but we'll check the archives. We'll check the archives. But these two areas for sure, man. So we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. But the, when I say the price action was clean, even if we look down here uh, before this thing really gave out, we had this setup here as the first five minute candle did eventually make the new high after a series of bottoming wicks. NVVE, absolute beauty of a stock, man. So, you know, I got up to 1K, then I went back down to 400, which means I had to make 600 to get back to my 1K level. 
So ideally, can I stay at 1K and add that 600 and go to 1600, right? That's that's ideally how we want to trade, avoid the bigger losses. So after I got back to 1K again, I'm like, okay, here's where I need to not suffer a big loss. Got too aggressive going up here, suffered a big loss, right? Back down 400 again. So we definitely could have done better and we fumbled this entire move here, really. So if, if we're to avoid the loss here the first time, and trade this area here better. Honestly, we should have done about 3,000 on this to stock here. I mean, that's not even including size, right? It just goes to show how much opportunity there really is to improve and uh, do better. So that's one good thing. Uh, other than NVVE, we'll come back to the archive in a sec. TGL, just quickly to mention this one. TGL, context. We started off really around like 80 cents pre-market, pushed up nicely, slow grind, coming up to 8, 9, 9 a.m. And then into the open, a little choppy initially, you know, but double bottom 98. And then it started to curl up, pushed up all the way to 130. I caught the trade over here going into the halt up. I pulled this thing up at the perfect time. And let's just put up the show trades to make sure this is the right candle. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I caught this thing at the right time here, going in with 200, 2,000 shares. My position was pretty small, actually. But, you know, buying this bottoming wick and this thing absolutely taking off. I mean, this was just a beautiful trade here. It took off straight into the halt up. This candle was coming to an end. Didn't have to hold for more than like 20 seconds or 10 seconds. And this thing just surged up nicely. It got halted up, resumed lower. And I did buy the dip here. And it surged up again. So some dip trades. Scalping the lows. Hyper scalping the lows worked out. I think I tried this dip here as well. And got something out of it. But I missed the first pop. I think I got long around 25 here. Watching over at a different stock like KAVL. And missing... An opportunity and then looking back and missing an opportunity so kabl on the other hand kabl this one i mean was pretty bullish pre-market low of 63 cents high of 150 and coming into the open it was a little tricky because it did give a massive red to green but then uh, even bigger pullback low of 39 high of 58 and then immediately titanic down to 30 before consolidating and then giving a red to green curling over VWAP. If I was watching this, I, you know, typically I don't love to trade these lows down here. I don't love to trade these areas, but some, some, some traders, some aggressive traders will. Ideally for me, I want to be getting long for the break of VWAP right here. And then I can trade the baby pullback into the VWAP dip right here and then into the halt up and then hopefully a dip and rip but it looks like there's no bottoming wick here so perhaps no dip and no dip and rip just looks like it went straight up and then from 46 to 63 to then 86 so let's pull up the archives let's just give a quick look through this recap is going to be short and sweet guys so hit that thumbs up of course consider subscribing to the channel and let's continue here into the live trading archive usually i only review this with students we did review marcelo's archives today so i am going to share my live trading here with you guys just so we can go over a few of these sweet trades so nvve you guys will see you know pretty and again this you know you can see like 1500 share blocks pretty early you were up already 1k on this thing like store brother Sometimes I get so mad at myself. Let's see here in the beginning. How did it really start off? So KAVL are watching to get to see if initially if it's gonna push over 49. And I think I think so far, you know, K KAVL, we were we did okay. I got back in again 39. So again, I'm trying to get that bottom to see if we're gonna curl back up. And this is where I'm gonna sell it because I see NVVE is moving up. And this thing already went from seven to seven forty. For me, it's going to be just be, hey, man, yeah, I'm in a decent place here, but this stock looks way better. 
so once I really re realized that, yeah, you can see I sold and just I'm, I'm, I'm coming over. What's going on here? Let me check out and see. And so I'm, I'm here a little early. There's a bit of a churn. I jump in for the churn. It actually, it actually opens up a little more. And so I start to, you know, increase my size, just 500 increments. It wasn't super aggressive right away. Let's see. I think I bought the dip. Did I? Hold on. I think I bought this dip. Yeah, I bought, so I bought the dip. I'm not in at the very bottom, but you know, in 49, there's 65 on the ask. And I'm going to sell, you know, 500 shares at a time here. Just taking something off. There's 70, probably going to sell a little more. And so again, I mentioned I could have used bigger positions. Like this trade could have easily been 4,000 shares. Three, and I got to get back to using bigger positions on these stocks. I mean, that could have easily been 3K position, right? But sometimes, you know, the game plan is to start a little slow. So I guess it's fine. But, you know, definitely after that trade, it, I think at this point we should have been up towards like 3K or so. You know, it, it, get, it gives a new high of day. I hesitate at the new high over 88 because I'm like, man, this thing is super aggressive. Will we like hit 92, 93 and then back down again? Nope, it just kept going. So I kind of missed 88, which went all the way to 808. And so I'm watching here. I'm like, I'm going to try to take this 88 area, but you can see that there's a massive spread. Kind of effed up the trade a little bit. This is where I should have done a limit order, perhaps at like 90, if I was looking at that 90 area, right? So we got 96 by 99, 89 by 95, 97 by 8. And I'll, I, you know, I really have to, I have to configure my level too, like how Marcelo has his, because I did look at the bid price a little too much here. And you can see the spread, right? So this, we mentioned that there was like a baby pullback. And then the stock went up again. Well, if I'm buying this, if I'm buying right there and I get filled like at that area, the trade is kind of thrown off. And so what I needed to do was to wait a little bit more or use the limit order, right? And right here, I'm waiting to see how we're going to bottom out. And it ends up just bouncing up so quickly here. I don't think, let's see. Actually, hold on. It, it's going to drop more and then bounce up here. So I try 76 and I go, okay, I'm going to try again. It's hard to remember. So I think we had 60. What was the low? The low ended up being like 60 right here. If my memory is any good. 74 or am I tripping? Okay, maybe I'm tripping. Okay, maybe I'm tripping. So I'm going to sell half at 95 area. Okay, this look, looks like it was a good trade. And I end up taking the other half right up at 95. Okay, fair trade. Low was set was, yeah, it showed 60. I thought I saw 60 at the time. Maybe I just remember the candlestick low, but it looks like the low was just 74 or 72 area. It gets back above the whole dollar. And right here is another place where I didn't buy the high. It, I think we got to like 25 right here. Yep. And then 30. So you can see that I wasn't as aggressive as I could have been in that area. Here's the loss. Here's the loss. Here's the loss of me being too aggressive at the highs. So here's 50. I know 60 and 70 resistance and that we got to clear those levels. But it's that thing inside of me thinking that we're just going to break through and just rip. And we saw that a few days last week, but today is a different day. You know, and even right here, like, I'm trying to pull up another order entry, which is, you know, a kind of a typical issue for me in a poor area, trying to get more size. If the stock is moving, it's not a, it's not good to do. I, there's a there's a pullback to like 30, 40 that I could have been in on for, to try this trade. Instead, I'm not looking at it. So, you know, it's, it's pretty silly stuff like that. So I'm not in a good rhythm here watching it at 35. And now I'm going to try it at the high of 60 and get blazed. Watch this. I'm like, oh, it's holding about 50. It's going to go. I'm going to jump in here. And get destroyed. Where's that entry? Right here. I'm like, oh, we held above 50 again. 
and you, again, I should have been in it like 30, 35, 40. Like, that's a much better entry than this nonsense here. Like, knowing that 60, 70 is resistance. Like, at least give myself some distance right here. So, you know, <laughs> oh my God. And then the stock didn't, all, you know, like we, we just saw, hey, 58, back to 50, 49. Of course, the time I get in, it's down to 30 because that's what the market does to me. So I smile and I say, yeah, you know what? I deserve that that loss for the nonsense. I just did it. And this is where I told myself, okay, do not do any nonsense like that again. So we take the loss down there around 30, $400 loss, fine. And we build back to 1K with our small size only to do the same nonsense again here. Watch this. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. This should not happen, man. Only to do the same, not like, again, those, those couple things I mentioned, bigger size earlier, being more patient at the highs, buying better entries underneath high of day and not quite at the highs. Look at the spread right there. Massive spread, 18 by 40. Spreads are too big. Trade is ruined. And then this thing flushes down to 80. Now, I sold before the flush, so I got slippage along the way down, but could have been avoided. Could This entire thing could have been avoided. We're pulling back off the highs. Time to be patient. Why am I being so aggressive here? Especially when we rejected before and came down to these. So look at where the pullback is coming versus the last time. Yeah, this time it was more gradual, but I should be buying right here. God, like it, it's so so simple, but why in the moments my 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 judgment is clouded sometimes. Walking away with a measly four hundred dollars, when this could have been like, if even with this small size with efficient trading eighteen hundred on just this stock. Not good enough. Got to improve. So I think I'm gonna rewatch tonight. I'm gonna rewatch this entire fifteen minutes. The other stocks I don't really need to watch. You know, again for um. What's this one called? Um, TGL, TGL. I'll show this trade and then I'm out of here. TGL. TGL. You know, again, this thing kind of dipped down a little bit. Double bottom, essentially 16. And I'm going to jump in. And can we retest the highs of the last candlestick? Can we get over 20? Can we get over 25? Can we get to high of day? So here it comes. I'm going to jump in right here, 16. I really should have took some more size here, man. You can see the tape is going to pick up a little bit here too. And there's going to be some green that really starts to hit the tape in a sec. So I'm going to jump in right here. And then it's just boom. It just, I mean, it just goes, right? 24, 25, 27, 30. And I'm like, okay. But I should have been in there like, you know, 3K size or something. 4K size. Well, that was the trade into the halt up. And then from there, we kind of did our thing, you know. And, and you know, this, this thing continued. It gave another move. TGL. Could have been a better day, but we're grateful for the green. We appreciate it. The Tesla trades could have been, with, we, we could have done without the Tesla trades. Tesla. Tricky stock for, for, for scalping, man. But. You know, back when Jessica was live, like, you know, I mean, with her call outs, there were some really good call outs. I kind of like dominated that day, you know, that 2K day I had. But honestly, since then, I haven't really looked back at Tesla. But the areas that are good are like the extreme reversals, whether are high or low. If the stock is extended going up or extended selling off, you can get the bounce or the short. But yeah. So, with that being said, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It's been Relentless Trader. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Check out the links down below for the classes. Check out the links down below for the chat room and the scanner. All right. Uh, that's going to do it. Stay safe. Stay green.